guys and welcome to my Pregnancy Wednesday vlog. Hope you're all doing well today. I have been a little bit behind on my other vlogs because my nephew was born last week and things have just been a little bit crazy at home because of that and it's been really exciting and really different um, and so things were just late so I'm sorry about that but I did end up posting my week review vlog went up Monday yesterday or last night when was my weekend vlog that went up and then today Wednesday I'm filming this today but it is gonna go up today so I mean you should be all set. <laughs> no, I mean I should be all, all on track. Uh, so yeah, welcome to my Pregnancy Wednesday vlog. One of the things that I wanted to talk about today, or I guess the thing that I wanted to talk about today, is baby gear essentials. What do you really have to have when you have your newborn? I know a lot of people are gonna have completely different opinions about things that you should have or things that work really well. So I don't wanna get into that. I just wanna talk about the basic essentials that you really should have when you do have your baby. Just the essentials. <laughs> And these should be, I think, fairly similar for everyone. So I talk about that today because I've been kind of going through uh, Emmeline's baby stuff and saying, what do I need? What do I have? What would be useful? And what did I have that I really didn't need? When Emmeline was born, we really didn't have that much. We had a really small house that we lived in and we didn't have space for a lot of stuff. Some of the things that we had for her we didn't end up using, but I think most people would use, so I'm gonna talk about them. I've got a cheat sheet. I have a cheat sheet with me today because I don't wanna forget anything. <laughs> First thing that I wanna talk about, which is probably the most important for most people, not for everyone, is a car seat. In England, when we had a Maline, because you had to drive to the hospital, I don't think they let you leave the hospital until you brought in your car seat and they you strapped the baby in and they double checked it and only then were you allowed to leave after you were discharged. It's really important that you get a car seat if you have a car and you intend on driving with your baby. So that is probably, I think everyone thinks of this, I don't think there's anyone who forgets to get a car seat, but it could happen, you never know. I. For myself, I recommend buying a new car seat. I don't recommend buying a used one or getting a used one unless you know who has had it. Is it from a friend of the family and you know that it's never been in a car accident, you know that it's been treated well, and you know how old the car seat is? Because a lot of car seats actually expire. In the US, we have a Kleck car seat and we love it, but they do have a seven year lifespan. So we bought it new. We know the year that we got it was last year. So 2016 we got it. It was the updated model and so it has, you know, a certain number of years left. The thing that you want with your car seat is you don't want to have been in a car accident and I like to believe that nobody selling a car seat would have put it, let me sell it if it had been in a car accident. I like to believe that. But because you don't always know, it might not be the best idea to get a used one. You just have to use your best judgment. Um, if it's all you can afford, Obviously it's better than no car seat at all, but it's just something to think about. If you sit down and talk to the person who had it, how old is the car seat? Um, how many kids have they used it for? Where has it been? Has it been on an airplane before? Has it been in an accident? Those kind of questions are things you'd want to ask and things you'd want to get to know before you bought it. Another thing to be said about a car seat, if you live in a city and you take public transportation all the time and you almost never drive, you might think that you don't want a car seat. I will say though, if you do plan on ever taking a taxi, it might be worth investing in one because I've had a lot of people that I know that have not got a car seat because they live in the city and then they've ended up spending a lot of money renting one when they take a taxi somewhere. They end up not really saving money because they end up paying for a car seat rental every single time they take a taxi somewhere. Or if they do want to go for a drive, they don't have a car seat and they have to ask a friend and look around and find a car seat. So it can just be kind of difficult. I recommend no matter where you live and what you take public transport, get some kind of car seat for your baby. Another thing that I recommend getting is a pram or a, a uh, I can't think of the American name. <laughs> it's like a push chair, a push chair or a pram or a buggy, something like that. You know, put your babe in to take out for walks. We used Emmeline in a sling all the time, but we also had a pram because it was just easier sometimes to hang our stuff off the pram or maybe we didn't want to carry Emmeline and we needed to have our hands free, especially as she got bigger and heavier. So I recommend getting a pram. 
I think getting a used pram was totally fine. We had one new pram that my dad gave us, which was great. It was a travel system. And then we ended up getting used prams. One of the, we have two big SEMO prams. They're fantastic for living in Norway. They're, I mean, you could take them off-roading. They're just the best ever. And they're the huge bags, that, like beds almost on wheels is what they are. And one of them we got for like 20 bucks used and the other one we got free and they're in perfect condition they've been through so much and they're absolutely fantastic so i think getting a used pram if you can find one that you like do it because why not i mean why spend so much money on something you don't have to but something that we had for emily that we we basically never used was a crib and a, a crib a mattress and a top sheet we had two top sheets fitted sheets and we had one mattress which we bought new and we had a crib which we bought used it's caught in England it's a crib in the US we got the crib and we had it ready to go and again all we had was the crib the mattress and the fitted sheet around it that's it and we tried to put her in there a couple of times but Emmeline fed so often it just wasn't working out for us and the best thing for all of us was just to sleep in the same bed and we did and we still do and we have co-slept with Emmeline since she was born pretty much that's just how it is now as well I'm not gonna get into a co-sleeping debate with anyone but if you do want to co-sleep you need to make sure that you do it safely look up the guidelines for safe co-sleeping and follow them no pillows um Alvin and I had a fitted sheet on the bed no pillows we wore sweatshirts and we had our duvet only up over our waist if we had one at all and then Emmeline was in between us so look up the safe guidelines for co-sleeping if it's something that you're looking into I'm not going to say anything more about that most people I think use a crib or a Moses basket or something for their newborn so when you get that you get your crib or your basket which I would recommend buying a new mattress I don't recommend using mattresses because it has been linked to SIDS so I would recommend getting a new mattress and I would recommend getting at least two fitted top sheets and then all you really need to put on your baby is like a sleeping sack or you can maybe put one of those blankets that has the holes in them I forget what they're called and I don't have one here but it's a blanket with holes in it. Most important thing, I think probably, which isn't a crisis if you don't have it before your baby's born, because the hospital has some, is nappies. No matter what kind of nappies you decide to use or diapers, you should probably have a couple handy. Diapers can be really expensive, especially if you're using disposables. So what I would try and do to save up is just to buy like a bag of a thing of nappies every week before your baby comes. And it helps cut costs. You don't have to buy a whole bunch because in the beginning when the baby's born they kind of have this crazy going to the bathroom all the time trying to sort their um, digestive system out a little bit and you go through a lot <laughs> uh, we used cloth we use cloth nappies most of the time at night we did not use cloth nappies with Emmeline when she was just born no cloth nappy in the world would fit her because she was so small so we used disposables and then we switched over to cloth when she got bigger which is maybe I don't know around a month I think and so we've used cloth, but in the nighttime, we've always used a disposable nappy because we just could not keep waking up and changing her cloth nappy. It was just too much. She wanted it changed all the time. We were exhausted. So we did disposable and that was how we did it that night. So definitely get some nappies. We use nappy cream as well sometimes if she needed it, only if she had a rash. So nappy cream might be something that you want as well. We use Weleda Calendula nappy cream. That's what we use. Something that I can recommend that a lot of people don't do is a carrier for your baby. So something like a Manduka carrier or a ring sling or an Ergo baby, something or a Boba or a Moby wrap, something so you can just strap that baby onto your chest and walk around and do things because babies want to be held all the time. It's good for them. It's good for you. And it's just so much easier if you have your hands free and you feel that you can actually do some other things and your baby can be comfortable and be with you. We have a Manduka and a ring sling and we love them so much. We have a Boba wrap as well which is a bit stretchy, uh, which we don't like as much as the other two, but it's been a lifesaver for us with that. And we used the Manduka all the way up until, I don't know, Emmeline was like one and a half, maybe even a little bit after that. If the need arises, we will still use it now. So I think it's fantastic. It's my number one. <laughs> something else that's really good to have for your baby is a baby chair, like a bouncer or something. You can sit in it and look around. They can watch you while you do something. If you're home alone and you need to shower or go to the bathroom and you don't want to be holding your baby, you can set them in the bouncer, anything. There's so many different kinds of baby chairs, bouncers, rockers, mamaroos, anything. I recommend getting something and because it will just, it could just really be, really be very, very, very helpful. And it's also a bit safer for baby because it's made for a newborn. So it's, if you can't afford a baby chair or find one, 
it's always fine to put a piece of blanket or something on the floor and put baby on the floor because baby can't roll off the floor. So you should be good with that. But a monitor, a baby monitor is also something good to have. Even if you don't think you're gonna use it because you're with your baby all the time, it can be really good if you have guests, if you just need a break, if you do wanna try putting your baby in another room for whichever reason, um, definitely get a baby monitor. We have a Philips Avent baby monitor. We love it. If the baby starts moving, the, it goes shh and it makes noise so you can hear that they're moving around. We were also at home and it was easy for us to just pop in and look at Emeline whenever we needed to. Most of the time she slept in her pram and we could easily look at her. And I was completely crazy and I had to check Emeline every two seconds to make sure she was breathing, which I still do now because I'm, I don't know, paranoid. <laughs> Another thing that you want to have for your baby is a thermometer. Obviously if your baby gets a fever and they're a newborn you call the doctor anyway but it is really nice for you to have that thermometer to be able to take the temperature. I would do it. <laughs> Something else that you should probably have is either is a burp cloth. Some kind of burp cloth. It doesn't have to be burp cloth. It'd be a kitchen towel. It can be an old piece of clothing. Anything. But just something to cover yourself with or to wipe up after baby. Uh, it's really... Babies are really messy and they spit up or you know you, you, you need it for some other strange reason. But it's really good to have some kind of piece of fabric for you to wipe up after your baby. I did mention that you want a baby blanket. Definitely get a baby blanket. Depending on the season and the time of year is how thick you want the blanket to be. We have one with holes in it. So, you know, if it gets over their face for some reason, they had holes. We also had some soft muslin blankets and then I had something for colder weather, a wool blanket as well. But definitely get a baby blanket. Some kind of nappy bag is also good to have. We had a proper nappy bag that we bought and it is a nappy bag and it's made for that purpose. But I think honestly, at the end of the day, you could take a plastic bag and throw everything you need in it. But I recommend having some kind of bag handy. It is nice with the nappy bag so you can actually have the pockets and the different separations and a little bit of organization is there for you, which can be very helpful in the moment when you're trying to change a baby that's unhappy and they need a nappy change and you're digging around in your bag. Where are the nappies? Where, where are my wipes? Oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Plastic bag would be my last choice. It would definitely be my last choice, but it works. And if that's all you need, you have, then use it. It's, why not? I don't re recommend using your purse as a nappy bag unless you have a really large purse because it's probably not going to be big enough. Probably not. Because wherever you go, you need to take nappies and wipes and maybe snacks for you. You need to take bottles if you're not breastfeeding or if you don't want to breastfeed in public. You need to bring blankets, extra clothes. It's just so much, so much. If you're not going to be breastfeeding your baby, or maybe you don't want to breastfeed in public, I don't know, you probably need to have, well you don't probably, you do, you need to have stuff to feed your baby with. So you need to have bottles, you need to have formula, you need to have, you can get sterilizing equipment or you can sterilize it yourself at home. You just have to look up how to do that. In terms of bottles, I would have at least two bottles, at least two bottles, and at least two teats to put on the bottles. Um, and if you are going to do that, make sure you look up what size teat you're going to need. So there's different sizes. I didn't bottle feed Emeline, so I don't know that much about it, but I know a little bit. Uh, but definitely look that up if you're going to formula feed. We did not formula feed or bottle feed Emeline, but we had a bottle and a teat just in case. Um, because if my milk came in late or it was it was maybe too painful for me or anything. Um, I'll do a, a different post on breastfeeding later because breastfeeding is not easy, but I think it's totally worth it. Uh, but it is good, even if you are planning on breastfeeding, just to have some kind of bottle at home, uh, as well as a breast pump. I would, you know, have those things at home, just a manual breast pump. I'll get into why, maybe next week I'll do a post on breastfeeding, or the week after. Uh, but it's good to have those things, even if you are planning on breastfeeding, because you don't know maybe you'll need them, and it's nice that you'd already have them there. That's really the main things that I would recommend. It's not a massive crisis if you don't have any of these things. Oh wait, close. <laughs> I forgot. I would definitely have some clothes ready for your baby. I recommend buying used baby clothes. I don't I don't think you have to go out and spend a bunch of money. Most of our clothes for Emmeline and this new baby are used. They're soft. They've been washed before. They're probably in really nice condition because kids change clothes like that. And yeah, you definitely need something. I don't think you need a lot of clothing for your baby. I don't. You definitely need enough to have at least two or three changes of clothes because there were days where I would change Emmeline's clothes like three, three times because of just explosive nappy or she, well, I spilled, I don't know, she spit up on it was just too wet. I don't know. <laughs> so I would definitely do that. 
um, baby clothes have different names, but we had, you know, the vests or the onesie. So it was, you know, with, with the t-shirt, the long sleeve or the t-shirt that buttons underneath the nappy. We had a bunch of, I think we had about eight to ten of those. And we had some baby pants and then we had like three or four pairs of baby pants. And then we had mostly for us, we used the suits when she was newborn. So like the sleep suits almost with its legs and arms and it zips up. We had a lot of those. We had a couple of pairs of socks. Uh, a lot of the baby pants we had had feet. We didn't want to deal with socks because it's impossible to keep them on newborns and babies. But we did have a couple of pairs just in case we needed them. We had some hats. Uh, we had a jacket or a coat for her, but we didn't put that on in the car seat. Remember when your baby's in the car seat, you don't want to put anything bulky on them. Put them in in one, you know, in their onesie, in their t-shirt, even if it's cold and strap them in tightly and then put a blanket over them because you don't want anything getting between um, you know, the, the harness and their body because that's what keeps them safe. You really don't need that much stuff. I would always recommend starting with just a few things and building up as you find that you need them. You can always find used baby clothes. Maybe you have friends that have them. Maybe you're gonna get way too many baby clothes if you have a baby shower, but definitely don't forget to buy some kind of baby clothes. Buy something, just something. And also don't buy them too small. If you buy a bunch of stuff for a newborn and you have a really big baby, it's not really going to work. Uh, I had, when we were in the hospital, I, I was transferred to the hospital after I had a Malene and I was talking to a woman there who actually knew and she had had her baby the same day. Her baby weighed like 10 pounds and all the newborn clothes did not fit the baby. <laughs> so they had to give it all away. That's basically, in my opinion, the essentials that you would need when you have a baby. If you don't have all of those things when your baby's born, it's not a crisis. You can have someone run to the store and go get them. I recommend buying most of these things used because you can get fantastic baby products used. Uh, yard sales are fantastic for it. <laughs> They're fantastic. Or Facebook groups where people post the items and you can get them in the mail. Really good. The only things I don't recommend buying used or getting used is a mattress and a car seat. I don't recommend that. Of course, there's a hundred other things I could say that were useful for us that were not you know, that you might want to have, but that's something you need to decide on your own. But if you're, if you're trying to stick to keeping it minimal and just minimizing the stuff that you have, then that can be, that's probably what you want to stick with. Um, and then you can, you can branch out from there. You can go from there. Cause obviously you'll probably want to get toys for your baby, but I always recommend buying most kids stuff used. If anyone feels that they have something that, that should be on this list that they've missed, put it in the comments and we'll stick it up there for people to read. Um, like a Dakota or a, a sleepyhead. I didn't put that. That's not like, that's not a need. That's not essential, but I've heard that it can be really useful, but I didn't put it on there. Cause it's not essential. Same thing with like a teddy bear. It's not essential. So I didn't put it on there, but a lot of people love to have them cause it's cute, you know, an essential for you as a parent, make sure you have some kind of camera. Take pictures and videos of your newborn. We took almost no videos of Emily as a newborn. I don't know why. I, I regret it so much now because I take so many videos now and I don't have as many memories that I would like as when she was a little, little tiny baby. So make sure you have a camera as a parent. And that's all for today. I don't really have anything else to say about that. So um, I will see you guys next week for another pregnancy update vlog and my bump update has been posted as well. I will post pictures today if I can. I'm having some computer trouble too. So that's that. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you guys had a really good day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Actually, I won't see you tomorrow. I will not. I'm going to see you on Friday. <laughs> Bye. Something I totally forgot to mention. Wipes. I used water wipes for Emmeline when she was about, after she was about a, a month old, we started using water wipes. And they're fantastic. I love them. You can't get them in Norway, so I have to order them from the UK. <laughs> but before that, we used just a piece of cotton wool. Like, it's like a thin, it's a, a pad about this big. It's really thin. It's just cotton. We used that for about the first week. And then we switched to just cloth to wipe her off with cloth, with a, a cloth, really soft baby cloth and water. So reusable wipes, really. The other thing I did not talk about was anything to bathe your baby. The reason is because we didn't really bathe our baby. It's a newborn. She doesn't really need to be washed. Like, why does she need to be washed? She's not doing anything dirty. I mean, <laughs> so we do give her a bath. Now we use Willetta Calendula baby wash for her hair and stuff. Uh, this is something you have to decide on your own, but in our opinion, in the very beginning, a bath is not essential. And so I didn't talk about any bathing stuff. We ended up bath just holding her and 
putting some water on her lightly with a washcloth in the sink and that's what we did so we didn't end up using a baby tub until she was bigger which you can see in my old vlogs if you want to see like our huge baby tub that we have which is fantastic so it's totally up to you what you want to use another thing I didn't talk about if your cloth napping a wet bag is a really good choice this is the one we got I got this on Amazon just a, a wet bag with two pockets or you can just put them in a bucket <laughs> you can just get a bucket we have a trash can here that we put the nappies in so the wet cloth nappies go in a trash can and when it's full we put it in the wash so that's what we did um I didn't mention those things because I, I forgot but there you go <laughs> bathing and napping just other things that you might need 